Welcome to a new daily top ask credit video. Today's topic. What is the worst fucking feeling? The grief from the death of a loved. Lost the love of my life after her five year battle with ovarian cancer. We were happily married 31 years. It was like someone had cut open my chest and ripped my heart out. Semi related, seeing the decline of a loved one. In my case, it would be my parents. I can't speak for anyone else but for me this is the single most depressing thing in life. Your parents are never old until they suddenly are. They fall down and get injured. They don't have the energy to go up the stairs in their own home. They can't cook your favorite dish on your birthday. Suddenly it hits you, they are elderly and you've been treating them like they are still the dark-haired workhorses from your childhood. You finally take a moment to think back and you see the signs of their deteriorating health. A stumble here. A fainting spell there. A cut or bruise that takes forever to heal. But it was no big deal because your parents have always been strong. They've never slowed down for anything. You look across the table at the suddenly frail woman sitting in front of you, squinting at her crossword puzzle and realize that you don't know how much more time you'll have together. It's then that you truly gain an appreciation for all your parents have done for you and what they will continue to do for you. You resolve to return the favor in what little time remains, not knowing that just by breathing you'd paid that debt long ago. When you suddenly cannot breathe properly and your heart beats hard in your chest from the pain of knowing you can never see or talk to someone ever again. Edit, I'm so sorry to those who understand this pain and for your losses. And then you forget for a while and it hits you again like it's all new. I'm so sorry you're going through that. Sending you love and comfort through the ether. There is nothing that can take the pain away. But eventually you will find a way to live with it. There will be nightmares. And every day when you wake up, it will be the first thing you think about. Until one day, it will be the second thing, Raymond Redacto. When someone you trusted betrays you. GF fucked my best friend in my vacation house while I invited both of them. Caught them in my bathroom thanks to another friend which was here. I asked her out three days prior. Best friend knew because I literally told him everything and he helped me put my plan into action. They are now together for nearly two years. I can't trust anyone anymore and the worst is that I can't even trust myself. I feel you man, GF cheated last week, I'm trying to move on but it's fucking tough. Edit, I know I'm moving on in the right direction as I'm way more active than before but it just feels like I'm walking forward without knowing where I'm going, like my gut tells me to do keep going and reach my goals to feel better but it just doesn't. I heard that the best revenge is success and I hope this is true. Betrayal when it hits is like this cold feeling in your muscles but a burning in your heart and a brick in your gut. That brick in your gut feeling is awful. My husband cheated while I was pregnant. I confirmed it pretty soon after my son was born, and I dropped so much weight because I couldn't bring myself to eat. That plus the postpartum recovery totally drained my body. I know relationships are never 50-50ths but loving someone more than they love you after spending years with them. Finding out from your friends that your significant other is sleeping around hurts bad when it's 100% unexpected. The heart sinks straight down to your feet and the mind goes down a rabbit hole of thoughts and emotions on why you weren't good enough. My wife of 12 years had an affair and tore my family apart, I lost everything. I hit the darkest place of my life and I can tell you at one point I didn't think I'd make it. But my kids were my rock, they helped me more than they'll ever know. Anyways I'm now a year and half out of that, I done a lot of self-healing and focused on me and if I can tell you one thing, it's that the way someone treats you is a reflection on them and not you. You were always good enough. They just weren't good enough for you. Much love my friend. Edit, thank you for all the support, sending love to all of you going through a similar situation. Just remember to take time for yourself and heal at your own pace. I started exercising and boxing and lost over 20 kilograms, see post history for before and after. This was the best thing I done and helped me slowly to start to become me again. But as we all know the biggest battle is in our heads, it's okay to not be okay, listen to your body, grieve, heal and move forward one step at a time. If you start to overthink then fill your time with something you enjoy, mine was cooking. Make sure to surround yourself with positive people who support and lift you up because we're all products of our surroundings. My decimeters s are open if anyone wants to chat or is looking for advice. Stay strong and much love, you've got this. The way someone treats you is a reflection on them and not you. 
You were always good enough. They just weren't good enough for you. Watching someone you care about mess up their life. All you can do is watch. I tried so hard to help my younger brother with his alcoholism and I couldn't. It was a feeling of dread, desperation, hope, he was good at saying the right thing. It's hard to watch. When I was struggling with my opiate addiction, I'd repeatedly get sober, only to relapse once again within months. I had this back and forth until finally I decided I wanted to end it on my terms, not anybody else's. Every time before that had been for someone else, never for me. I finally decided to help myself and I walked away from it for the last time. That was seven years ago this June. A lot of times, you can't help someone out of this hole, unless they're willing to help themselves. Edit, words cannot describe how amazing y'all have made me feel tonight. Thank you so much for all the kind words. If you ever need someone to talk to, to vent or anything, feel free to send me a message. You may not feel like you matter but you do. And you matter to me. A close friend of mine drank himself to death because of some CPTSD he wouldn't accept help for. At the time of his death he was engaged to the woman who ran the drug addiction crisis center. We had all of the help lined up. We were so gentle and never severe or confrontational about his drinking, we did everything we could to be supportive and make sure we never shamed him for his struggle. My ex still found him dead on the couch, yellow as a canary. Georgia, I know that you've been dead for almost six years but I'm still so fucking mad at you. And heartbroken. And super pissed off. I recently moved back to the neighborhood, right on your old path. I keep expecting to see you walking to the store. But you aren't there. Because you died. Then my eyes well up. Then I remember how hard it was to watch you commit suicide over the course of four years and I get mad at you again. You were supposed to be her godfather, you fucking asshole. Why did you demand to be her godfather if you were so determined to fucking die? Asshole. We all miss you and hope that you know we still don't blame you it just hurts a lot. This reminds of what Chevy Chase has said about John Belushi, I was so angry I didn't cry for five years. Holy shit dude. I'm sitting at the bar bawling my eyes out now. I'm so sorry for your loss. You have every right to be mad at them because they clearly meant a lot to you and it's obvious you loved them. Just don't let anger be the only thing they make you feel. I really hope you're doing okay. Grief. Overwhelming, panic-inducing, heart-wrenching grief. My son died at 18 years old, four years ago. He was an amazing son and a great person. I was in shock. I organized his entire funeral so that he was buried four days after his death. I wrote his obituary. I chose funeral-appropriate outfits for myself, his two half-brothers and sister. I chose the clothes he was buried in. Bought him new shoes. I bought him a belt from the skate shop he went to and the young man joked are you tired of him using shoelaces? Because he did. Family and friends said I handled myself with grace. I was so elegant. I rushed everything because I was a ticking time bomb about to explode. I knew I could only hold my shit together for a few days before completely falling apart. My son deserved a good send-off, and I held it together. I came home from the internment and started to wail, like these primal, animal-like sounds of despair. I would bury my face in my pillow and wail. Before my son's death I had never made a sound like that. I barely remember the months after his death. It was like my heart had been physically ripped out of my body. The grief was so great I hurt physically, like the worst physical pain. I cry every single day. I miss him so much. Never heard true, heartbroken keening until I heard myself after the ground came out from under my feet when my mom died. The sound was almost out of body and a surreal feeling in the absolute worst way. My mom passed away on Friday from cancer, when my dad told me I thought I was going to die on the drive over there. These last 18 months she had been sick have been the worst of my life. I'm truly afraid. Because I've been in such a fog. I feel almost as if it hasn't fully hit me yet. Shame. Very similarly, legitimate regret. I'll tack onto this and say the shame and regret that comes from realizing that you've hurt someone, especially someone you care about, in a way that won't be easily fixed. Tooth pain. Currently have an abscessed tooth. The worst. Fuck. Had one a month ago. The day before and the day, Saturday, of me going to a walk-in clinic were honestly the worst days of my life. 
The first day I was sick from taking so much tiliol and ibuprofen and it didn't help with pain at all. I banged my head against a support beam in the basement to try and knock myself out. Once the antibiotics kicked in and I had my third Vicardi things got better. That Monday I had the tooth pulled and it was the best thing ever. Good luck to you.